Hello, my name is Alex Peterwig and welcome to this Maya tutorial. What we'll be covering today is uh, how to create a wing um, with uh, cloth simulation to drive the animation of the membranes between the fingers. Uh, the rest of the animation is controlled using uh, joints, um, so we're looking at how to integrate these together in a single mesh. Okay. Um, the problem that you'll normally have is when you apply cloth to an object within Maya, um, you can't apply it to uh, just selected polygons. Um, you've got to apply it to the whole mesh. Um, so you need to come up with a system whereby you can break the mesh into parts, um, animate them separately using different methods, and then bring the whole thing back together. Okay, so if I show you the constituent parts here, you might get an idea of, of how it's working. Um, what we have here is... Uh, We've got the uh, input wing, um, which is the, the part driven by the uh, simulate the uh, by the joints even, um, and then on top of that you've got the input cloth, which is uh, animated by uh, the uh, end cloth system, and then we've got the final output, which is the whole thing combined together into a single mesh. So this is a really powerful um, technique. Um, the reason uh, I thought I'd do a tutorial on this is when I was doing a project, I could find no um, reference or instructions on how to do this anywhere, um, but I knew it could be done because I'd seen it um, in uh, various films and other people's projects. Um, I'd seen people asking on forums how it was done, and I asked on forums how it was done, but I uh, received no answers. So, uh, yeah, we need to uh, crack on and I'll show you how it's done start with what I've got. So I've got my um, layer, my scenes separated out into layers. So again, we've got the output wing, which is the, the final thing we're going to be uh, putting the animation onto. Um, you can see you need a reasonable amount of uh, resolution um, in the wing membranes themselves, because obviously being cloth, um, you do need to have the, as many polygons as, uh, well, as required as, as you can. Um, one thing to note is that this um, when you're often when you're making a wing, um, you're going to be wanting to have subsurface scattering on the render, and to have that, you need to have um, some depth to the uh, to the mesh. So uh, this is, uh, if I just go into face mode, you can see that there are two sides to this. Um, so there's uh, a top and a bottom of the wing um, with a gap in between. Um, but that doesn't matter because what we're going to do is when we break the model up. So I went through and selected polygons and then extracted them to produce uh, the cloth sections here. So I've got three cloth sections, um, but I only took the top surface. Um, so they are just single polygon thickness. If I was going to face mode, pan underneath, you can see that I've, that is just a single polygon. Okay. And then the final layer, obviously, was we've got the, uh, the shape of the arm there. So if this were a complete, um, a complete model, you can imagine the rest of your, your creature, be it a bat, a dragon, or whatever, will be coming off the side here, um, and then you've just got these membranes cut out. Okay, let's have a look. I've also created a joint system here, um, which is all pretty, pretty basic. Um, this joint here just to hold the side in so it doesn't move with the wing. And then it's just all following through with the structure of the, of the wing shape there. So, so far, this is all pretty standard stuff. Um, let's find out how to uh, create that uh, cloth, though. Right. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to grab one of your wing membranes uh, and in uh, N-Dynamics mode and N-Mesh and create cloth. Um, so when you've got that cloth created, what we want to do is we want to stitch it to the, uh, the body of the wing um, <coughs> using a component-to-component -component, uh, N constraint. Apologize if you can hear my uh, little pea barking in the background. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go into edge mode. Select the first edge there along the side here. I'm going to shift double click just to get a load extra in there. And shift click there. See if it'll be nice for me. Excellent. So that was a shift double click just to uh, select everything in between my current selection and I do want to select these two edges here as well okay now I've got the edge of the wing selected I need to select the uh, the edge of the uh, the wing um, fingers so I'll just turn off the cloth right click edge 
And uh, so you do, again, need to make sure you're shift selecting these. I'm only going to select, if you note here, you can see the gap between where the, the, the top membrane and the bottom membrane would attach. Uh, I need to get the top membrane. So shift select. And just go around the whole edge of the model and select everything you need. Again, I'm sure you're enjoying hearing my dogs have a little uh, play in the background. Sorry if it's causing any distraction for you. So as you can see, this is uh, can be quite a fiddly process. And uh, one thing you'll have noticed if you've been paying attention closely is that I've accidentally got these selected as well. Sometimes happens with uh, when you're doing some loop selections. Not a problem, just... Uh, Control click a marquee around it and they've gone. Okay, so I've got all my edges selected now. I'll turn my cloth back on. All I need to do now is go to end constraint and click component to component. Ideally, you get all these lovely little blue dots appear. That is your constraint that has uh, been applied. Um, and when you press play, uh, you should see that uh, pretty much nothing happens. Um, there's a slight bowing of the cloth here, but it's not moving from this constraint here. Okay. When I first developed this technique, um, it was for a project I was doing um, within university. And uh, the first time I went through and did the, uh, the whole process, it probably took me about two hours to do two wings each with about five or six membranes on. Um, but now when I did the, the final um, run through on my, the final shot I produced for that uh, project, it took me about 35 minutes. Um, so you, with a bit of practice, although it is fiddly, uh, you can uh, obviously get a lot quicker at it. Okay, Some of these uh, edges will obviously uh, select a lot easier than others, so that, one, that wing membrane there was very, very easy to uh, make my initial selection. So back in edge mode, and start with the first one, and moving round. See if it'll let me do a full selection here. Excellent. So that's got the whole membrane selected now. Um, so again, end constraint, components, component. And if I turn that back on, again you can see that is now attached to the uh, to the body of the wing. Just one more to do now. If I was to demonstrate what would happen if I uh, didn't have that uh, constraint on. You can see the uh, the edge of the wing there is starting to separate. If I were to it just increase the number of frames to, say, 100, and play that through, you can see it just falls away, whereas the rest of them stay in place. Okay. Finish this off now. Frame that up. Go into edge mode. Select my first edge. Shift to my last edge. First edge, last edge, turn off the cloth, edge mode, first edge, last edge, and first edge, last edge. Uh, that's not worked. How annoying. I'll have to select those one at a time. It's always worth checking just before you do your constraint, just checking to see if there's anything else selected. And if you look good, just uh, apply your constraint there. And then we've got uh, the whole wing has now been um, set up with cloth, so that's, uh, that's pretty good. Um, you can now forget worrying about how to set that up and start trying to test the, uh, the model out, see if how it works. So let's get some animation in there. I'll just do some quick and dirty stuff. Key selected, go to frame 50. Let's bring that up there. Key selected, go to frame 100. Reset those to zero. And key those. 
So straight away, you can see that that's uh, that's working. The uh, the cloth is billowing with the uh, the movement of the of the wing. It's all staying attached, which is nice. Um, you will note that you're going to need to make some modifications. So if I demonstrate what I mean, if I select this joint and just key that one. Bring that in to there. Key there. Key there. Back to the beginning. Reset that to zero. And key there. I just go and set these to zero at the end as well. Bear with me while I'm just setting this up. It's always important when you're doing um, something like this to make sure you you do a, a reasonably thorough test of uh, of the rig to make sure it's going to do what you want it to do. Um, and you'll see uh, you'll see the result of what I'm doing in just a second. There we go. Okay. So watching this animation through now, watch how the cloth just goes incredibly slack um, in the middle there um, and if you uh, uh, when I was doing this project I did quite a lot of study of bats um, and there that you didn't see a lot of this uh, slackness and billowing you might do in an larger animal if you're doing a dragon for example but if you're doing a bat um, you want that to be much tauter um, so you're going to need to go in and adjust some of the settings for your cloth and the one that you want to look at is the rest length scale so at one, there is zero pressure on the uh, on the on the wing at all. There's no stretching or squashing at all of it. If I, however, decrease that to say 0.85, and I'll put this one right really low, so you can see how dramatic the effect is to 0.2. What that does, it's telling it that the the cloth is already stretched. So when it starts the animation. You can see it's now much tighter, particularly this one. Look how tight that cloth is. It, it doesn't have any sort of uh, billow to it all at all. At all. Um, so that's uh, that's too tight. Um, I'd go back in, and again, I'd set that to something like uh, 0.85. Uh, and just play through that, and now you can see that's much better. When it really gets um, a lot more. Uh, compressed it does start to have some flex but it does have that stretch at the beginning that keeps it taut so it's just a bit more controlled there right so now we've got that all that set up what we need to do is um, have this animation driving the the single continuous mesh the first thing I want to do is I'm going to select all all my objects turn off the joints I don't need them and I'm going to group those together. Then what I'm going to do is turn those off, select my wing, shift select one part of this and press the up arrow to select the whole group. And then I'm going to go into animation and I'm going to go into create deformers, wrap. Uh, I'll just uh, show you the options that I've got here. Um, pretty simple, the only thing you need is uh, auto weight threshold selected and that really sort of um, uh, makes your life easy basically just hit create and you've created your wrap turning off these layers let's have a look what we've got so there we go that is a single mesh um, that is uh, has no break so if you uh, had uh, your model you could apply distortion maps and displa sorry, displacement maps and normal maps and uh, everything would be working perfectly uh, you can even um, if you go into your attribute editor Start. Yeah, wrong one. That one. There we go. You can put a smooth mesh on so it really smooths everything out like I had at the start. And uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's the process of how you uh, create a single mesh with. Um, with cloth parts to it. You can use this for characters, not just for wings. So. Uh, one famous character that I can think of that had this was uh, the much beloved Jar Jar Binks who had uh, 
ears that were dynamically driven by cloth. Um, this solution gives you a lot of power in terms of uh, secondary motion, so it really adds a lot to your animation. Um, and in my solution, what I did um, for my project was I added um, hair dynamics to the, these fingers, so they had a lot of flex to them as well, so they were using a spline IK. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you found it useful. Um, if it had been around when I was doing my project, I'd have certainly found it useful. So uh, thank you very much. My name has been Alex P. Twig.